the Joe Rogan experience. So tell me about your past. Like, what, what about, like, when you're saying going through the system, you mean the judicial system? Like, what, what about your past was... Uh... Yeah, I've been, like, in prison and stuff like that. I did three and a half years in prison. For what? For assault. Aggravated assault. I don't see you fight. assaulting people. That's weird. Oh. Well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Well, you should have been at my courthouse. You should have been in the, talking, telling that to the judge. I would have said that to the judge. Yeah. Your Honor, I think I think this is a mistake. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so three and a half years mm-hmm. for that. And so people wrote you off. They felt like this is just, you were just going to be trouble your whole life. Yeah. Especially I had a full scholarship. Um, I was already, I played the year. I ended up getting probation for that. I ended up playing a year of college at Kilgore Dream College. And I ended up violating because I didn't have a job and I had to pay my fines and fees and show up to my um, meetings, which no one wanted to help me um, to do. And so I ended up getting violated um, from that. And it was only a two year probation at the time, justification. And so no one wanted to help me um, to go to my class and help me pay my fines and stuff like that because I was in college, you know, didn't have any money. And so they violated me. I went to prison for on a five-year sentence, but I got parole three and a half years. So you went to prison because of the <coughs> violation of not paying the fines? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the feeling of being counted out by the system, that's uh, one of the main problems that most people have with our justice system. They mm-hmm. said it doesn't really rehabilitate people Mm -hmm. it makes people feel like there's no hope and Mm -hmm. in a lot of ways it makes them resign themselves to a life of crime oh yeah yeah then it's really not no nothing they can really do to help somebody to rehabilitate themselves you know whenever they get out there's no programs they can really like jobs and stuff it's some jobs but not really good paying jobs like that they really need to really um survive out here so from going from that to becoming a successful martial artist, like, and to be, and I know you don't think you practice martial arts, but you definitely do. <laughs> but to, to be a successful fighter, you've you've uh, you've changed your future. But mm-hmm. I think you've also opened up a lot of people's eyes that maybe they can change their future too. If a guy like you can do it, then what's the difference between you and a lot of other people? Not much difference. <clears throat> Yes, my brother remind me of that all the time. Thinks he thinking that it, the fighting is so easy because I could do it that he believed that he could do it. I'm telling you, it's completely different. It's not. It's is your brother like big that. like you? Yeah, he's big. Yeah. Can he fight? Well, you can fight in the streets. You know, it's completely different fighting in the streets right. than mixed martial arts. But yeah, in the streets he could fight. How old's your brother? It's 31. I'm recruiting him right now. How much does he weigh? Where's he, like? Where's <laughs> he's he at? About 250. Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> well, but listen, he's short, man. though. He's yeah. short. He's like 5'10. So is Daniel Cormier. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can yeah. be short and still be the heavyweight champion of the world. I mean, Mike Tyson, too. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, but he's, uh, is he interested in doing it? Yeah, he is, but I'm, I, I told him, no, you're not doing it. Really? Yeah. Why? Because my brother too ghetto. First of all, they wouldn't. The world wouldn't be able to handle someone like him. Really? And he's too outspoken and he's real ghetto. Man, I don't know if you can tell him to tone it down a little bit. We <laughs> no, might have. I, I tell him that every day whenever I talk to him. See, I was going live and just want to be ghetto all the time. So he can't be doing that. You got to learn how to turn it off and on. And he's like, no. It's weird shit being famous, isn't it? Oh yeah, yeah. But for you, I mean, to to come from being incarcerated, not having hope, into being in this position now, and I mean, I can only imagine it's got to be completely surreal. I'm surreal. That's what I said. It's like I really don't need to get high on nothing or <laughs> drink anything. But it's cool though. It's it's a plus, you know. Smoke a little weed here and there. Yeah, but, to relax. Yeah, <laughs> relax. Take the edge off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But does it give you more motivation to keep pushing too? Because you realize that what has been possible. I mean, you've you've done an amazing thing with your life. Yeah, so it gives me a lot of motivations. Um, like because I know how easy it is to slip up and go back into those situations. Because it was nothing but a street fight that ended ended bad for the guy I was going against, 
and ended up having to serve almost five years for it. So it could still happen. I could walk out of here and get in the street fight with someone and be, probably be way worse situation. You know? I think you got better lawyers now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think, but you're not a you're you're an easygoing guy. Right? Yeah, now I am. Yes, now you are. Mm-hmm. But you weren't back then when you were younger. Back then, I was just. I think I had a lot of anger built up in me. I wish I still do now, but back then it was a lot more. Um, I believe it was just the way I was raised, you know, um, wasn't showed that much love, you know, in my household and just the family circle. You know, I believe that's what led to a lot of my my troubles in that, the street. It's a lot of young men. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you feel like um, you have a, di- a second chance with your children to show them love because you didn't get that kind of love when you were younger? Oh, yeah, for sure. You know, um, <laughs> My kids is like completely different than how I was raised. You know, I'm so happy that they're like making straight A's in school and making honor roll every uh, every year and getting already getting scholarships and stuff like that um, to go to big colleges. And so it's like already is my life is already unbelievable as it is, and just seeing that that's like make me so proud. That's beautiful. Yeah, so proud. That's amazing, man. That's what everybody wants, right? Yes. What everybody wants is like a happy life where it all comes together. Mm-hmm. And I, I think <clears throat> with a person like you, you really appreciate it because it wasn't always like this. Right? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I, I I tell people all the time, I don't regret. I don't, you know, wish nothing like that would happen. I believe that I had to go through that situation to, to be a better person than I am today. So it's like raising, being raised without a father figure and stuff like that. I felt like, to me, everyone is different. To me, I felt like I had to go through that situation to be a better father, be a better man here today. Because if not, then I for sure would have been going in and out of there. You know. Catch new episodes of the Joe Rogan Experience for free, only on Spotify. Watch back catalog JRE videos on Spotify, including clips. Easily, seamlessly switch between video and audio experience. On Spotify, you can listen to the JRE in the background while using other apps and can download episodes to save on data cost all for free. Spotify is absolutely free. You don't have to have a premium account to watch new JRE episodes. You just need to search for the JRE on your Spotify app. Go to Spotify now to get this full episode of the Joe Rogan Experience.